Mac, come here. Yeah? You wouldn't happen to be a company stoolie, would you? Who, me? Yeah, you. No, I never gave you that idea. Here you've been asking a lot of questions. Oh, I just try to learn something. I don't want to be a roustabout all my life. I want to be a driller, huh? Well, maybe, someday. Figured I'd have to make tool dresser first. I ain't running no school for tool dressers, Jack. Okay, sorry. He's sorry. Oh, lay off. You're just a roustabout on this rig, Mac. Just a flunky. Don't forget it. Here. Go get us a couple of cans of beer. Yes, sir. Get one for yourself. Hey. Look, I, I don't like that guy. Don't quit riding him, will you? Just trying to get along. Okay, you're the boss. That's right, and you're discard. No, nothing definite, Bart. But it's here somewhere. No, no, they're just jumpy and suspicious. A case of a guilty conscience needing no accuser, eh? Well, carry on, Ed, and I'll run a make on Flint and Saunders. All right. On Ed. Watch your step, will you? All right. Hey, Flint, here comes Stella again. Hi, Sam. I gotta talk to you. What are you doing coming out to the rig? You wanna get me fired? Suppose you got hurt or something. I'm worried, Sam. Lanky ain't been home in a long time. He's probably out on another binge. I checked all the drunk tanks. The hospitals, too. Something's happened to him. What makes you think that? Well, Mike told me Lanky had won 600 bucks in a poker game. Nobody's seen him since. 600 bucks, a guy could have a lot of fun across the border. Things are cheap south of the river. You think he'd run out on me? That'd be my guess. Why don't you take a run down and look around? I would if I had the bus fare. Could you loan me 50 bucks? Okay. One condition. You quit bothering me about Lanky. That's a promise. There's 50. And here's another promise. That's the last time he's gonna run out on me, and that's for sure. Hey, no wonder Lanky ran out on her. Who's Lanky? Guy who worked here before me? Is that any of your business, Jack? Oh, keep quiet. No, just a guy we happen to know run out on his old lady and she's trying to locate him. Oh. <laughs> Watch it up there. Guy could lose a foot that way. That's right. Come on down here. Ted, go get us some more beer. I'll take care of this. What's the idea? I told you to quit riding him, didn't I? Well, I still think he's a company man. What's the difference? We got nothing to worry about unless you got something on your mind. Of course not. And try playing it straight and don't get chicken. Okay, Sam. Okay. Well, he's well known around here. He's a small time gambler named Lancaster. Lanky Lancaster. Yeah. His wife was on the rig tonight looking for him. And Flint gave her 50 bucks for bus fare. She figures he's in Mexico. No, no, it's just some more names to throw in the kettle. All right, Ed, we'll check on him. Oh, uh, didn't find anything of any importance on Flint and Saunders. Saunders did 30 on a 502 in San Francisco back in 46. And Flint was booked several times for drunk and disorderly, twice for resisting arrest and assaulting an officer. Just a belligerent drunk. I see. Well, they're nervous about something, Saunders especially. Hey, uh, look, I'm gonna try telling time by the stars when I get back. What have I got to lose? Only your life. Uh, let me know when you finish that star thing, will you? I'll be waiting. Okay. Hey, this 
beer is warm. What took you so long? Oh, I uh, phoned my girl. Uh, sorry. When I send you for beer, get beer. Never mind the girlfriends. Okay. Sorry. Mac, what are you doing? Oh, I'm uh, just checking my watch. What do you got, a clock up in that crown block? Oh, there's a big clock up there in the sky, if you know how to use it. Sounds interesting. How's it work? Well, if you know the date, and the latitude, and longitude, then you know what time a certain star is supposed to cross the meridian. So? Well, there's a couple of holes in that eye beam up there. I line up the star Vega through the holes, and then I know what time it is. You also know a man named Morrison, don't you? Morrison? I don't think so. Well, I think so. Knock it off. You better get up on the symbol board and start breaking down that foible. Now? Yes, now. Here's the big wrench. You uh, want me to give you my hand? No. Believe it or not, I'm interested in the star business. Well, I don't know too much about it. I uh, just uh, fool around a little bit with astronomy. It's kind of a hobby. You know, you're the second roustabout I've had that's had that for a hobby. This fellow Morrison claimed he could tell time with the stars, too. Well, anybody can with a little practice. He couldn't. Claimed the stars shifted on him overnight. Said it made his watch 15 minutes fast. He must have been crazy. The way I figure, all you stargazers are a little cracked. Check the drill line. Okay. When Ed McGrath phoned in the report about the attempt to kill him, we knew definitely that the stars were the clue. But we didn't know enough about astronomy to find the answer. So I called on my good friend, Dr. Frank Shepard, at the observatory. Fortunately, astronomers work at night. No, Mr. Matthews. The stars do not change their positions relative to each other. I see. And how can a man check his watch by a star? by the apparent motions of the stars, which is caused by the rotations of the Earth. The stars rise about three minutes and 56 seconds earlier every night. I see. Then a variation of 15 minutes... Would be impossible. The only thing that could cause such a variation would be a change in the point of observation than the Derrick move, not the star. There is no other conclusion. We check all time by the stars. They are accurate to the split second. I see. What is this all about? Or is it confidential? Well, it's a rather unusual case, Doctor. Someone has manufactured some false evidence against a man we're defending. Now, we can find no reason whatsoever, except that an oil well Derrick was secretly moved and my client had been checking his watch by this Derek. Interesting, very interesting. It is to someone. When our special investigator pretended to check his watch by this same Derek, they tried to drop a heavy piece of machinery on his head. And the motive? Isn't there always a motive? There usually is, but it's not always so easy to find. Thank you, doctor. Thank you very much. He's in the phone booth all right, but I don't think he's talking any day. 